So are baseball's unwritten rules like double secret probation, like in Animal House? We're going to jump right into the vlog today. Today we're going to go over the hottest item on the on the plate right now is the unwritten rules in baseball. And then also we'll go over the standings uh, with the unwritten rules, invisible rules, or boogeyman. Uh, is a very hot moment right now. What happened the other night is Fernando Tatis Jr., in Texas, Padres are up by seven, one out, bases loaded, Fernando at the plate, 3-0 count, and the pitcher just throws a meatball, he crushes it for a grand slam, thus pissing off the Texas coach, Chris Woodward, and all the fans are up in arms, the media jumped on it, it's huge right now, but before we get there, now in Major League Baseball, the funny thing is, is with these unwritten rules, you know, if you don't follow the unwritten rules, then you'll never become a Hall of Famer. It's never been done before. It's always been frowned upon. You never celebrate. You never show up the team. Uh, you'll never be an all-star. never make it the World Series. You'll never be recognized as a talented player in the league. That is the message. Well, that's the way they kind of make you feel like with these unwritten rules. You can't go doing this. You can't go doing that. Because you'll never be a great player. So if you're new to baseball or you're not and you're a veteran of baseball or you're kind of in the middle... Unwritten rules have always been frustrating because they're contradictory and they seem to be applied when and where the team, coach, or player pleases. So I think what a lot of fans are getting at is they're just getting sick and tired of it. And based on social media, ESPN.com, MLB.com, uh, even the quizzes and trivia that I ran on social media, they're just overwhelmingly players and fans are sick and tired of the unwritten rules. Now, if you're new to Major League Baseball, this is extremely frustrating and confusing about these unwritten rules. Um, if you're a veteran of the game or been around a while, you understand it. You're like, you totally get it. You understand the rules. They're very frustrating. Now, the thing is with these unwritten rules is how Major League Baseball reacts. And Major League Baseball, as good as they are good, as bad as they are bad. Houston Astros scandal. They caught them. You know, they punished the organization with fines, draft picks. People got fired. The bad side of it, no players got suspended. The good side of baseball, Joe Kelly and the Dodgers face the Houston Astros, throw out the players because the players are policing the game now because Major League Baseball and Conditioner are not doing their job. And the bad is, is Joe Kelly gets suspended. Again, that just doesn't make sense. Players don't get suspended for cheating, but Joe Kelly does for policing them. The bad is in Oakland Athletics coach does a Nazi sign. The good is his Oakland organization addresses it through media. The bad Major League Baseball does nothing about it. So again, the thing is that's frustrating with players and fans and what's just overwhelmingly what people say is they're tired of the contradictions and the hypocrisy of Major League Baseball. And finally, I'm going to end with this. Uh, rather, you're for or against the unwritten rules. I think, again, what it's coming down to is the hypocrisy and the contradiction. It seems like players and coaches can apply it when and where they please. Uh, you know, you get a young player like Fernando Tatis, 21 years old, and Juan Soto, too, got some static from Will Smith, the pitcher that they faced the other day. You know, there's just an issue I have is with pitchers and their delicate sensitivity. You know, they can pump their fist and everything after they get a strikeout, but if a player hits a home run, they can't, you know, celebrate it or anything like that. So there's a lot of issues with that and I think that's what fans are getting sick and tired of so Major League Baseball has an issue with it they need to address these unwritten rules and figure out what it is but you know what the way I look at it freaking grip it and rip it who cares if you're up by seven in the ninth inning you know if your pitching staff isn't good enough that's on you you know if you're going to run the score up on my team fine but you know I, there are some unwritten rules like not stealing extra bases if you know if you're up by 10 runs or something like that yeah you're not going to steal bases you're not going to take extra bases but at the same time, you know, when, you know, when is the line we're supposed to cross? It's just, I think enough is enough. And let's just start playing the game and having fun. And if you don't like it, don't watch the game. If you don't like it, quit. Don't be a manager. Don't be an owner. Go somewhere else. The game is changing and it will always change for the better. Okay, we're going to start off with American League East. Um, you got the Yankees and Rays leading the way. Now, one of the things that's sticking out is that if anyone's noticed, uh, the Yankees don't have DJ LeMayu, uh, Aaron Judge, or Stanton. And their bullpen starting to show some weaknesses. They actually lost to Tampa Bay last night. Uh, so very interesting what's going on with them. So as a Yankee fan, or is it time to press the panic button? 
I don't know. Uh, then Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's legit, man. Tampa Bay's going to be there. They're just phenomenal. They're like the best story in baseball. And then, uh, let's see, Toronto Blue Jays. They're at 500 now. This is my team I'm really pulling for. I really think they've got a good squad. Uh, they've been six at their last 10 games, looking really good. And then the Baltimore Orioles, I kind of expected them to start fading. Uh, they've already lost four in a row. They were hot for a little while, but I think a lot of teams in Major League Baseball are like, hey, wait a minute, we can't lose to the Baltimore Orioles. Um, so I don't see them lasting, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, they're great on the road, but they're horrible at home at 4-11. and 11. And then the Red Sox, uh, I'm calling it right now. They're done, nine and a half games out. I really don't, you're 7-18. and 18. Dude, we're, <laughs> we're only like 25 games in, and you're already nine and a half games out. Calling it right now. Red Sox, put a fork in them. Done. Okay, now we're going to move over to American League Central, uh, Minnesota, uh, they're going to win the division. Minnesota's just loaded. Their pitching's really good. Cleveland Indians, they just need to score some runs, and they're going to be in it. I mean, they're 15-9. and nine. They, They're very much improved from last week. Um, the key with Cleveland is they have to score. They've got good pitching. They don't score. That's that. Um, and then the White Sox continue to play great baseball, and I've been picking them. Uh, they're a playoff team. They're playing great ball right now, and they're coming up with clutch hits and clutch home runs. Um, Detroit Tigers 9 and 13 and Kansas City Royals 10 and 15. I don't see the Tigers holding on. I mean, they're two out of their last 10. So their true colors are showing. They've lost eight in a row. Not doing good. And Kansas City, uh, I still think Kansas City has a chance. Uh, their pitching is not doing too hot. They've got to step it up at the pitching. But, uh, you know, this is a division I, I think that's pretty competitive. But right now, it's looking like Minnesota, Cleveland, and Chicago are going to end up taking uh, playoff berths. Okay, let's move on over to the American League West. Uh, Oakland Athletics, man. They're the team. They are probably the best team in Major League Baseball. They're just absolutely phenomenal pitching, hitting. But the thing when, with Oakland is, is they're just super, super clutch. Uh, Houston Astros, I thought with their pitching issues, they would be tanking. They're actually 14-10. and 10. They've won seven in a row, eight out of their last ten. So, damn it. I really wanted them to suck, and they just seem to be surprising. Uh, everybody, uh, they, I don't know, no comment on them. Texas Rangers, uh, Chris Woodward, the complaining, whining coach. Uh, I don't know what Texas, Texas is here and there. Uh, they've lost four in a row, five out of the last 10. They don't have pitching. I just don't see them making it. And then the Angels and the Mariners, sorry, pack it in, tear down the tent, pack it in. You're done. Uh, Angels, you're nine games out. Mariners, you're nine and a half. You're done. I don't care if you go on a major crazy streak right now. You're done for the season. This is a 60-game schedule. There's no way you're going to make up nine games in the next 35 or 37 games. Sorry. Put a fork in you. All right, so let's move on over to, let's see, the National League East. Uh, this is my crapshoot division. This is just like, who's going to really step up and take over this division? Every team's in it. The Washington Nationals are in last place in this division. They're three games out. I mean, it doesn't look like anyone really wants this division or at least wants to dominate it, so everyone's just super competitive in the division. I mean, Marlins are 9-9, nine and nine. Uh, Mets are right there 2.5 out, Philadelphia's 2.5 out, and the Nationals are 3 out. It's just crazy. Um, I don't know who's going to win this division. It's, it's hard to tell. I mean, everyone's picking the Braves. The Nationals have fantastic pitching. Philadelphia, some days they look phenomenal, and some days they just look like a regular team or a team that can't compete. So I don't know when they're going to show up in the Mets. The Mets just have to score runs. Um, but then the problem with the Mets is outside Jacob DeGrom, their pitching staff's horrible. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, now we're going to move on over to the National League West. Uh, Dodgers got a really good hold on the division, seven in the last ten since last week. Uh, the Rockies still in there. Rockies have decent pitching. And they seem to keep pulling it off, but they are showing their uh, Rockies are starting to show a little bit of wear and tear. They are two out of their last ten and lost three in a row. So is this the real Rockies, or are we getting the Rockies that we had the first couple weeks? San Diego Padres heating up. Uh, super exciting, fun team to watch still. Fernando Tatis, unwritten rules. And then Matt Machado last night hit a grand slam. So... Padres are still in it too. Uh, Diamondbacks are surprising me. They're actually 13 and 12. Uh, they won seven out of their last 10. They're looking good. They've 
uh, beating good teams actually they beat Oakland so that's the surprise team but again very competitive division and San Francisco Giants sorry Giant fans but put a fork in you you're done you're eight games out you're cruising into the 30th game of the season in the next what five or six games you're done you're not gonna make up eight or nine games in this division this division is way too competitive so unfortunately for Giant fans you guys are done for the season not even playoffs I don't know what you're gonna do okay last but not least we're gonna go into the National League Central where the Cubbies have a pretty firm lead uh, they've only won five out of the last ten but they're 16 and 8 this is not a competitive division uh, to some respects uh, Milwaukee Brewers good pitching still in there it's their hitting that's the issue surprisingly coming from the Brewers uh, St. Louis Cardinals six and seven so again it, they're still like 13 games off uh, it's yet to see what's going on with the Cardinals so I can't really comment on them they've been kind of here and there and then uh, my, my horse man the Cincinnati Reds a fantastic pitching rotation uh, they're five out of their last ten uh, Bauer just threw an incredible game uh, yesterday man he's the hottest pitcher in baseball I know everyone likes Jacob DeGrom and whatnot but Bauer is flat out doing it with spin rate pitches making people look totally ridiculous I mean when you have an ERA as low as his that's just ridiculous and then uh, Pittsburgh Pirates put a fork in you you're 10 games out we're not even into the 30th game you're done for the season I'm sorry Pirate fans I thought you guys were going to put together a little surprise this year and be competitive but you guys just played stink man uh, lost three in a row two out of the last ten just not going to happen. Sorry. So we hope you like your video. Thank you very much for watching Baseball News Club. Uh, again, we appreciate all the subscribers and followers on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, we've been growing uh, steadily. Uh, we're trying to put out great content for you. Um, again, we thank you for support. Please tell your friends and families. Please subscribe and follow. And uh, have a great day. Thank you again.